Spare a thought for the spare. Prince Harry has endured a hell of a week explaining his hell of a life to a judge in a London court. He claims that for years the English tabloids have harassed and hounded him into misery. They've hired private eyes to constantly follow him and hacked his phone to get the scoop on his secrets. He says it must stop. But for a man who's recently released a money-making autobiography and given multiple television interviews spilling the dirt on his famous family squabbles, is Harry's demand to hold the newspapers to account really a case of breathtaking hypocrisy? If there's one thing the Duke of Sussex does remarkably well, it's rebellion. Not only has the party prince married an American divorcee, he's broken free of the monarchy altogether. And this week, he was at it again, becoming the first royal in more than a century to testify in court. Harry has always been a drama queen, and he's married the empress of drama, so it's hardly surprising that they've elevated it to fever pitch. <laughs> You don't hold back, do you? <laughs> oh, I believe in being very restrained, my dear. <laughs> Prince Harry is just as forthright. At London's High Court, the fifth in line to the throne has been blasting the press for robbing him of a private life. He's accused Mirror Group newspapers of using unlawful methods on an industrial scale to steal personal information and then splash it across its front pages. I can tell you, in royal circles, um, and including with his father and his brother, this is a deeply unpopular point of view. Nobody approves of it. Lady Colin Campbell has been part of the British aristocracy for 50 years and written seven books on the royal family. She believes a courtroom is no place for a prince, even one who's quit. To say, I'm Prince Harry and therefore you've got to believe me, isn't washing and it does, it's not going to wash. Prince Harry, I love you. But Prince Harry isn't alone in his fight against the mirror. His lawsuit is a test case for a hundred other complainants who all accuse the newspaper of hacking their phones and hiring private investigators to spy on them. That's why, for two extraordinary days last week, he was grilled over 33 articles published between 1996 and 2011. He claims the stories contained information so personal it must have been gathered illegally. Prince Harry has always hated the British press. Um, he's hated them because he feels that they were responsible for his mother's death. So he wants to revenge, take revenge. He wants to wipe it out and control it. Royal author Angela Levin knows Prince Harry well. In 2018, she spent many months with him writing his biography. But she was heartbroken watching the wonderful young man she thought she knew self-sabotage in court. He was absolutely loved. Sometime he was more popular than the late Queen. I loved him when I spent 15 months with him because he was funny, he was articulate, he was charismatic. But he's now not like that. He's wretched and resentful and negative. And he can't leave this behind. On the stand, the king's second son was clearly angry and hurt. He accused the press of turning his Australian gap year in 2003 into a misery by paying a private eye to follow him. He also said the paper's habit of hacking calls and voicemails ruined his relationship with Chelsea Davey, who lost hope the couple would ever be left alone. But for all his pain, Angela says the prince failed to provide proof the information published was gathered illegally. He doesn't seem to know any details. It's all his emotion. And if he's asked, well, what is actually the date? When did it happen? Who wrote this? He doesn't know and says things like, well, you have to ask the journalists or, you know, my lawyers will have to sort that out. Um, 
It's almost laughable, but it's also tragic. You're right, you're right. I thought the substance of his testimony was pathetic. It's stupid, aside from anything else, and it shows a degree of arrogance and entitlement that I do not think will go down well in any quarter. The redhead was also left red-faced in the witness box when some of his evidence was shown to be contradictory. It happened when he was remembering his mother's former butler, Paul Burrell. Under cross-examination, the prince explained how much he hated the man for writing a tell-all about Diana and said he refused to speak with him. But in his memoir, Spare, Harry claimed he did want to face Burrell in person. I wanted to fly home, confront him. I phoned Pa, announced that I was getting on a plane. He, and then in a separate phone call, Willie, talked me out of it. When the different stories were pointed out to the prince in court, his answer was unimpressive. He suddenly said, well, I, I didn't realise that. He said that lots of times when the judges said, or the lawyers said to him, you've, you've got two different um, ideas here. They said, oh, uh, oh I didn't realise that. Prince Harry might have been ill-prepared for the high stakes of the High Court, but his argument isn't baseless. The British tabloids have been busted before for widespread phone hacking, and they've paid out more than £100 million to dozens of other victims in the past decade, including Alan Yentob, whose phone was hacked when he was a boss at the BBC. The judgment was that my phone had been hacked every day, at least three times a day, for seven years. Why were you targeted? The BBC is a very significant institution in Britain. And if, you've, if you can find out what's going on in all these programmes and stuff and find out what's happening, that's the most appealing thing. My address book was called An Aladdin's Cave because there were so many famous names in it. Alan was represented by the same lawyers now fighting for Prince Harry and his confident they'll win again. I believe that there is evidence to back up his stories. I mean, I, I asked myself, you know, the notion that my phone was hacked like that and many other people's phones by News International and by uh, the Daily Mirror. So how come Prince Harry wasn't interesting enough to hack? I mean, is, does that, does, is that plausible? Not really. <laughs> But Prince Harry's court case isn't the only fight on his mind. According to his biographer, Angela Levin, she's convinced there's also a battle brewing in his marriage. Happy Following reports, the father of two has a West Hollywood hotel room permanently on standby. Well, if I'm really honest, I don't see it going much longer. And I think that it's very strange that she didn't come over to help Harry promote his book, Spare. I thought she should have come to the coronation because just walking down the aisle at Westminster Abbey where the ceremony took place on his own, all his cousins were with a partner. I know that they have troubles in the marriage. I understand from f now six separately reliable sources that Harry called in lawyers. Lady Colin Campbell knows all too well when a royal union is about to end. In the 1970s, her own imploded. She divorced the 11th Duke of Argyle just months after their wedding and believes Prince Harry's fairy tale will finish when Meghan decides she no longer needs him. People like Meghan will always stay with the man if there's no better option, if there's no better deal. I'm not sure that she has anywhere to go up to from here. If there's one thing everyone would probably agree on, it's that the spare has had better weeks. But the truth is, he better get used to it. He's launched two similar lawsuits against other publishers. And if he wins, dozens of other claimants are set to follow his lead. This isn't the end, is it? Oh, no, this is definitely not the end. This is the beginning. It's not even the beginning of the end. It's, uh, 
And I think this is going to go on for a long, a lot longer. There are many more people and many more cases which are coming forward, uh, I happen to know. This is just the beginning. Hello, I'm Sarah Arbo. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on ninenow.com.au and the Nine Now app.